Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Actually not so different from a few years ago when I started the channel. We're going to have some fun and create possibly a slightly better solar system. Based on something that was just recently released in a very famous web comic. So let's try this together and welcome to Odemath. Now you might think that our solar system is already perfect, but not everybody thinks so. Including myself, of course. As a matter of fact, as more and more exoplanets are discovered by NASA and other agencies, we kind of started to realize that, well, our solar system seems to be completely different. And there are certain things in other star systems that we would like to have as well. Like, for example, unusual planets like Super Earth or Mini Neptunes. Why don't we have any? Well, it just so happens that the author of the famous webcomic known as because apparently it's a word and not an acronym, thought exactly the same. And if you've never heard of this, it's actually a pretty cool webcomic that's been around for about 15 years now. And anyway, so this was trending on Twitter and I actually found this pretty brilliant. This comic, as you can see, tries to essentially erase a few redundant things in our solar system and create a beautiful, perfect solar system as we kind of wish it to be. So let's actually try this. Let's try to create a much more perfecter is that a word? It is now. Much more perfecter solar system as suggested in this comic by XSD. And let's start with the outskirts of the solar system and specifically with Neptune and Uranus. The author proposes and I totally agree that we actually, instead of having two ice giants, have just one. And here I think Neptune is a slightly better choice. Mostly because Uranus, um, apart from I guess a lot of jokes related to the name itself, does not have as much exciting things around it as Neptune does. So here we can just totally erase it from existence and instead have one major ice giant, Neptune, but also give it a bit of an upgrade. We're going to place Pluto as the moon of Neptune, once and for all solving the problem with the whole Pluto is planet or not a planet thing. It's no longer going to be a planet or a dwarf planet, which is honestly is a kind of a silly concept to begin with. Instead, it's going to be just a moon of Neptune and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think it's a pretty good idea to do it that way. Then we have the question of our ice giants. We have Saturn and Jupiter, but as the author suggests, what if we turn these into one singular object and then also add tremendously large rings to this object to make it just perfect. A perfect gas giant planet. And I think the most fair way of doing this is by, well, basically having them collide into one another and then also adding rings to these objects afterwards. So here's our Jupiter to Saturn collision. They're going to become a single object. And as you can see, it suddenly became extremely, extremely hot and very, very bright, mostly because a lot of energy was released here. And I think I may also have destroyed both planets now. Okay, that is not how I wanted it to go. The reason they actually got destroyed is because since Jupiter was moving toward Saturn and their masses are actually really, really, really large, the amount of kinetic energy released here was dramatic. Like this was insanely powerful. And because of this, um, we now have no Jupiter or Saturn. Okay, right, let's uh, rewind this a little bit and make this happen. And so here we go. Here's our Jatern, as it's now going to be known, with its somewhat large uh, rings around it, slightly bigger than the ones around Saturn. And even though it doesn't actually look that big, it is technically more massive and much larger. And the mass of the planet is also much larger. It's a combination of both Saturn and Jupiter. All right, so that's good so far. Now let's move a little bit closer to our own planet, the asteroid belt. And I guess, yeah, it does need to have more asteroids. Currently, the asteroid belt around our sun that you can kind of see right here is not really that well populated. Yeah, there are, of course, hundreds of thousands of asteroids and many of them are relatively large, like Ceres, which is somewhere right here. But nevertheless, we could use more and some of them could even be bigger. And so to do this, let's just do the following. We're going to create an artificial ring around the sun made up of different bodies and here they're kind of going to be basically like moons and every one of these objects is a relatively large asteroid very similar in size and mass to Ceres and some of them are even bigger and they're going to be pretty much all over the place where the asteroids are. Now I've added only a little bit, in reality we could obviously add more but this would dramatically slow down my computer right now. But here, what we're getting is essentially a much more highly populated uh, asteroid belt, very similar to what it was like in the beginning of the solar system. Basically very similar to the so-called 
late heavy bombardment period that transformed our planet and also our moon, creating a lot of various collisions on their surface. But before that there were a lot of different asteroids in the asteroid belt. And so here it's almost like we're rewinding the time, allowing for more of these uh, rocks to exist in the system. Now obviously this creates a slightly more dangerous conditions for planets, but I guess it's also more fun and possibly would sort of force the humanity to finally develop the technology to uh, protect ourselves from different asteroids and also find ways to mine them as well. Okay, next we have a missing super earth, which I personally really agree with. We need to have a super earth. And this one is going to be in the location where Mars is. Why? Well, because pretty much every self-respected star system out there has at least one super earth. Even the nearest system to us, Proxima Centauri, has a super earth. Where is our super earth? What happened to it? Actually, that's one of the biggest mysteries. We don't know what happened to it, but we believe we used to have one. Some people believe that Planet 9, mysterious Planet 9 that we're still looking for, could be that super earth. And so here, let's do that. Let's place Planet 9 in the location where Mars used to be. And then we'll come back in a few minutes to see what happens to this planet. It might actually warm up and turn uh, somewhat interesting. But what about Mars itself? Well, we're going to replace our moon with Mars. Because we don't really need our moon, technically. But we'd like to explore Mars. I mean, at least Elon Musk wants to explore Mars. And by placing Mars closer to the Earth, it makes it so much easier to do so. And because Mars is about 8 times more massive than our own moon, it will also create a lot more stability in the axial uh, spin of our planet, stabilizing the climate conditions. But because it's also more massive, it might increase the tidal effects by several times, suggesting that the tidal effects will probably be much larger. Now, this might not affect our planet in a dramatic way, but it might change certain things. But I think here, the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. At least, to some extent. Well, either way, it's fun to have Mars very close to Earth, especially because every time you look up now, instead of the moon, you're going to be seeing something that looks like this. A very interesting red planet in the night skies. But other than that, I think that's it for our own planet. Let's go a little bit closer to the sun now. And I really like what the author suggests we do with Venus, mostly because of all of the horrible things that it went through, including of course turning super hot, losing its rotation, then spinning the other way, and basically turning into a kind of a hellish planet. Here, we're going to give it not just the moon that we're going to be borrowing from Earth, but also a set of rings, because I think this planet deserved it. Now actually, we believe that at some point Venus may have had rings um, and probably even had a miniature moon because it did experience at least one collision. But we don't really know what happened to them, and we don't really know how long any of this survived. Every time there's a collision, a major collision with the planet, we expect certain things like rings to develop. But it doesn't always happen, so we're not really sure if this really existed. And currently there's almost no way for us to find out if any of this actually did happen. But some scientists do believe that Venus once upon a time may have sort of looked similar to this, at least ring-wise. And lastly, one thing we're going to add to make our solar system even more interesting, as suggested by the author, we're going to add some mysterious unknown planets in the inner orbit of Mercury. And here, we're not even going to know what planets they are until we actually go and explore them. So basically, let's just place a few randomly generated planets here just to make this a little bit more interesting. Now, you may have seen the video I made previously where we just recently discovered that there is an unusual asteroid in the inner orbit of our solar system and we never knew it existed, even though it's relatively large. It's possibly three kilometers in size. So it's technically not impossible for a much larger rock, okay, maybe not a planet, but a larger asteroid to exist here as well. Simply because the sun has a tendency to actually hide things from us. It's bright enough that we don't see objects orbiting in this region. But obviously a planet would be pretty visible. Nevertheless, it would be pretty fun to have these mysterious, unusual planets very close to the sun that always were there, but we just didn't know they existed. And I guess in a nutshell, this here is the slightly better, more improved solar system as suggested by the author of the awesome webcomic. Now, if you've never really read the comic itself, it's kind of funny, it does have a lot of science and math in it, and a lot of really interesting commentary on various topics. But other than that, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video, and I just wanted to recreate this because I think it was actually a pretty good idea. On that note, in some of the future videos we might create something else, unusual, mysterious, and interesting in our solar system. But for now, tomorrow you're going to learn something you may have not known before, so make sure to come back, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.